I asked you what are five things uh, to be consistent in to be the best teacher. Mm -hmm. These are the five things that you said to me. Okay. Right? Uh, genuine leisure time. Mm -hmm. uh, consistency. Uh, a, a desire to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, having a life outside of work. Mm -hmm. And then not staying uh, in, iso in isolation. Mm -hmm. So you, you get four. Was there a fifth one? I don't know. Maybe I couldn't count today. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure that. So we have four here. Okay. Okay. Talk to me about genuine leisure time. Yes. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad you asked because when I was in my master's program, um, I took a class and I learned about the importance of leisure time. Teachers do not give themselves genuine leisure time and it doesn't allow our bodies and our minds to rest. And so what ends up happening is we are constantly functioning in survival mode. So then when we get in the classroom, we have not rested. We have not taken time for ourselves, even if it's a little bit of time, yeah. so that we can be our best selves in the classroom. Mm. I realized that for me, whenever I stopped making my job my entire life, I became a better teacher in the classroom. Yeah. And so, I mean, sometimes it's hiking, sometimes it's painting a painting that I would never show anybody. Um, but just having a genuine time where you're doing an activity that you enjoy. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Do you find teachers struggle with that? Or like, why doesn't that happen for them? For sure. Um, I think that there is a common cultural idea that our job should be our life. Mm. Um, not just for teachers, but for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and it is very hard because it goes against the grain. When you start setting personal boundaries, I'm not going to work on the weekends. When you start figuring out what is the actual priority, what actually has to be done for Monday to be a success, then you can start saying, I don't need to work on this at home. Mm. I don't need to work on this at blah, blah, blah. But also, if we're being honest, I'm going to kind of call us out here. Sometimes we just don't use our plan time in the right way yeah. throughout the school day. Because, you know, when you're teaching all day and then you get to that plan time, you're like, give me a give me a sonic <laughs> drink. <laughs> um, you're like, I'm just glad to be breathing in air that doesn't smell. Um, and so... <laughs> You know, uh, it, yeah. it's hard. It's a yeah. hard balance. For sure. But For sure. Yeah. I get it. A desire to learn more. Mm hmm Be consistent in doing that. Yeah. You have to. If you become a teacher that gets stagnant, you become the teacher that no one wants to be around, including students. Mm. And they're the reason we're in it. Gotcha. So if I don't have a desire to learn more, that's not necessarily about education. That could be about a culture. That could be about even a one particular student but a desire to learn. You can't be somebody that wants other people to learn and not have that desire for yourself because that is like the first rule of teaching, model the behavior you want to see. And so they, our students have to see us wanting to learn. Our colleagues have to see us wanting to learn. And that stirs something up in people when you're like, tell me more about that. Yeah. Tell me more about whatever you're doing. Tell me about the sport that you're playing. Why do you like it? Oh, your dad played. Tell me more about that. And so when you start learning about people, about cultures, about your profession, then you become a person that people want to be around. And then you get to make a greater impact. Yeah, yeah that's good. Uh, having the third one that you said was having a life outside of work. Mm. Got to. <laughs> you got to do it. You got to do it. Because in order for you to be a good teacher, you have to understand that there is work mm -hmm. and there is play. Okay. In order for you to get in the classroom and be consistent and be good, you have to understand the difference. Because what happens is when those become too intertwined, there are one of two things. Your personal life also just becomes your work life. And you spend no, no amount of time doing anything but that. Teachers, we can always find something to do. I can, I'm sure I got some grading I can do right now. Yeah. Am I going to? Probably not. 
um, I, I can do that next week. <laughs> it's not a priority right now. Yeah. I don't need it for Monday to be a success. Yeah. But also something that we start to see a lot of is um, the crossing of boundaries into the workplace. Mm. So you start bringing more personal things that need to stay personal into a place that sh it should not exist. Gotcha. And so having that clear cut, this is this is my outside of work life. There are parts of my life that I share with my students and there are other parts I don't. Not because I'm out there doing anything crazy, yeah. but just because that's my outside of work life. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Keep when I come to your game, that is that is still work life. Yeah. <laughs> that is still work. <laughs> but yeah. 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 Um, man, I, okay. I, hopefully I remember. I want to come back to that. Okay. Um, going to the games and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, the fourth thing that you said was not staying in isolation. Ooh. That sounds mm. like such a needed thing. Yeah. So one of my favorite sayings that I've heard a lot, um, I heard it at church for the very first time of very many years ago, yeah. which was we refuse to live life alone. Yeah. Um, whenever I taught at my previous district, they said teaching is not an individual sport. Mm -hmm. And something that we're seeing a lot of in the education field is a lot of emergency certified teachers, a lot of alternatively certified teachers, people that have had other professions that are saying, you know what? I see the need. I see that there's a need for teachers. I'm going to leave this job and I'm going to come in. Now, what happens a lot of times is people don't realize what's going on. They don't realize the depth, the the emotional toll it can take, the physical toll it can take. And they start to get bogged down and they feel like they're the only one. Mm -hmm. They feel like um, if I ask somebody for help, if I let somebody in my classroom and they see the chaos that's going on, I'm going to get fired. They're going to judge me, whatever. When I tell you I have seen some chaotic classrooms, I've gone into classrooms to calm classrooms down for teachers I do not recommend doing that for those of you that have good classroom management. Don't do that, friends. <laughs> call, call somebody else. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I've done it, and those teachers just feel so isolated. Mm -hmm. And it's such a dangerous place to be because when you're on an island, you can convince yourself of anything. You can convince yourself that you're the worst teacher, that you can't, that whatever, and then you leave because you didn't let anybody help you. Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes just as teachers, even when you know you're a good teacher, you just need to go to somebody and be like, today, I don't want to be here yeah. today. If another child looks at me, I, I just may combust yeah. into a flame because it's hard. It's hard work. And so you have to have someone, at least one person that can be real with you that can say, you're just having a rough day, whatever. Um, but also somebody that you can go to and say, Hey, I need help. My class is chaos or I need help. I don't know how to teach this and all of the things. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I love that. So, um, genuine leisure time, mm -hmm. a desire to learn more, having a life outside of work, mm -hmm. not staying in isolation mm -hmm. are things that you say, Hey, find ways to be consistent in doing these things. Mm -hmm. It's going to make you a better for sure teacher. No, that's good. One of the things you mentioned doing those things was uh, showing up at games. Yeah. Like the outside activities. Yes. Is that is that more so because you have found that when I do that, I get better results out of the classroom? Or is that because I go do that because I just know some of the students don't have support? Uh, both. <laughs> okay. For sure both. Um, teenagers are my favorite people. They are so fun. You never know what they're going to say. You never know what they're going to do. Some of them, they just walk around odorous. Um, it could be a good odor. It could be a bad odor. It could be a too much odor because um, they're learning how to wear the sprays. Oh, yeah. And so they, teenagers need as many people supporting them as possible. It does not matter to me if this student has 15 people at the game. Yeah. If that student said, Miss Bowles, are you coming to my game? When is it? I'll do my best. Now, I don't make promises I can't keep. So if I tell them yes, I go. 
But if I don't know if I can go, I say, I don't know. Yeah. Um, and so, but there are students that don't have that support. And let me tell you, in the classroom, I am, you know, one way and I'm still very, it's still very exciting and it's a good time. But whenever I go to those games, I am like every other mom in the stands. Yeah. I'm hollering, I'm clapping, yeah. I'm, you know, now go over there. I'm, I'm doing all the things. And just the way that that changes their perspective of teachers, it humanizes us. Yeah. And it humanizes them for us. Mm -hmm. So I do it so that, one, they have support, right? Because you just never know which kids are going to have adults there and which yeah. aren't. Um, two, I do it so that in the classroom, some of them, I'm like, you, no, I went to y your game now. Yeah, I, saw yeah. you, I, saw, I saw you. Okay, I saw you on the basketball court passing that ball yeah, and whatnot. Okay. Yeah, uh, um, it also gives you the opportunity to kind of joke with them whenever, you know, they're wanting to shoot stuff into the trash can. And, and you're like, mm, well, I saw how you tried to make that layup last week. Yeah. Is this is this going to be that situation or yeah. are we going to make it into the trash? And, you know, they're like, I got it, I got it. So, um, but also just like, I get to see them in an element that they're comfortable in. Yeah. I have students that are comfortable in the classroom. They're brilliant. You know, they raise their hand at every question. I have students that are uncomfortable. They struggle or they just don't like it. And whenever you can see somebody in their zone. Yeah. That it's you incredible. can't. You can't. You can't. Oh, there's nothing that compares. Yeah. Even though, I mean, yeah, they're 13, 12, 13 years old, but whenever they're out there playing a sport, whether good or bad, whether they're doing great or not, if they're out there in their element and they're having a good time, you see them and you're like, oh, yeah, that's Brandon. That's yeah. whoever. That's Bobby. Like you, you see them differently. So...